Howdy everyone, this is Trisha and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this decoupage vase with a simple floral arrangement. Alright, so to create my Valentine's Day arrangement, I'm going to need a vase. So I've got this cylinder glass vase. You can use a plastic one. It can be square, any shape you want. And then I've got a styrofoam piece that will fit inside of the mouth of my container, whatever you choose. You'll need to cut it to size. So we do have a craft knife here that we can use to do that. To decorate our vase and decoupage, I'm going to use tissue paper. And I purchased in the color that I wanted and a variety of patterns on there. You can choose whatever you like, whatever color you like. And we're gonna be using some Mod Podge and a little brush, or you can use like an Elmer's white glue and a little bit of water to create a Mod Podge. I've also got an assortment of flowers here. Um, these are some aster, some little mini roses, little wildflowers, and little grass. You can choose whatever you like. This is just what I happen to choose. I do have some wire cutters because I will be cutting into those. I will be using scissors to cut the tissue paper. And I've got a glue gun and some glue sticks to secure my styrofoam into my container. Now, my products, like my vase, styrofoam, tissue, and flowers. I purchased these from the Dollar Store. I purchased them from the Dollar Tree. You can get your items from wherever you wish to get them from at whatever price you can afford. Okay, so let's get to crafting. All right, so before I start putting any flowers into my vase, I need to prepare it by either putting the styrofoam on there first or decoupaging it with my tissue paper. You can choose to do one or the other first, but I'm going to tell you that I would probably want to put the styrofoam piece in there first because it does make quite a bit of a mess and we don't want to disturb the decoupage once it's already on there and handling it too much, unless of course it is well sealed and it is dried up really well. Uh, also, an advantage of not putting the styrofoam in there is that you can put your hand in here while you're decoupaging if you wish to do that. So you can choose one or the other. I'm going to go ahead and start by putting the styrofoam into my vase first. Now this piece of styrofoam that I purchased has a little bit of a difference in the size from the bottom and the top part. So I need to level it off because this is a pretty even cylinder piece and it does go in there but I want it to go just a little bit further than what it does. So instead of trying to shave the whole thing down, I'm going to decide that I probably want about half of this piece of styrofoam almost all the way in there. So I'm going to cut that. So that's basically what you're going to do first is just trim off your piece of styrofoam depending on where you got it from, whether it's a little square or it's a circle like what I've got here. And just trim it to size. All right, so I've gone ahead and I've cut off this top part off of it. And now I only have just a little bit. And I don't want to shave it too much because I do want it to go in nice and tight. I don't want it to fall all the way in. So you don't want to shave too much, just a little bit. So there it does go in just a little bit deeper. And as you can see, I didn't shave very much off. It's better to start off shaving off just a little bit at a time rather than shaving off too much. So that's pretty good. It goes in a little bit further than what it was before, and I feel like that's a sur uh, substantial amount. So I'm going to go ahead and... I just realized one thing, uh, a supply that I left out, and that is some moss. So I'll pull that out once we're ready to use that. Okay, so now to get it so that it doesn't move from the top part of my vase, I'm going to add some hot glue just on the very edge don't push it don't put glue uh, all the way like as far as you think the styrofoam will go because what happens is when you're pushing in the styrofoam it's already also pushing in the glue so we don't want any glue down here and then the styrofoam pushes it even further and then you'll have that in there now it's not going to show because we're going to decoupage it but if you were to decide that you didn't want to decoupage it and you wanted to have a clear vase like that then, then you don't want glue to go any further down. So that is already ready. I'm going to let it dry while I go get some moss and I'll have that ready for when I want to put my flowers in. All right, so there we have the styrofoam all set 
inside our jar. And now we can go ahead and begin to decoupage it. So I'm going to take the tissue paper. And the tissue paper that I grabbed, like I said, was uh, some different patterns inside. I thought it was really pretty. I'll bring this up so you can see it a little bit better. It had four designs and it had some white uh, paper in there too, but I didn't feel I needed the white paper. So I don't want to be able to see into the frame. I want to make it nice and, uh, what is the word, o opaque instead of translucent. So I'm going to use this one first and put this on here. And I could take big sheets of it and stick it on or I can cut it into small sheets and do a little bit at a time. So I'm going to kind of go somewhere in between. So I'm just going to cut strips and then from those strips you can cut little squares. Now you can be really careful and lay down your tissue paper or if you want to use like decorative napkins you can use those as well. You can be really smooth with your uh, paper or you can let it get wrinkled up. I kind of like the look of kind of like a little bit of a wrinkled up. It gives my vase sort of a, an antique look to it or you know just something a little older than um, it being really really smooth and modern looking. So I'm just going to lay some Mod Podge on here just enough for that piece of tissue paper. It's best to do a little bit at a time. Lay your tissue paper with more Mod Podge so that little spots where you didn't get any on the glass so that the tissue paper all is all laying on there and then I'm just going to smooth it out with the same brush and there we go and I'm just going to keep doing that till I've covered it up with this hot pink and then I'll cut smaller pieces of the other uh, tissue papers and layer on top okay so that's what I'm going to do just keep adding this I remember like I said if you don't want to put the styrofoam on yet what you do is you can put your hand in there and hold it while you do that. And I am overlapping it over itself, so that gives it a little bit more opaqueness. It helps to do that. Any little corners or any pieces, any parts of the tissue paper that get folded in, that's fine. For me it is. Like I said, I like that little wrinkled, crinkled look of the paper but it'll be up to you to decide what you want to do. And I'm not minding if it goes a little bit beyond the top lip of the jar because it'll stick to the styrofoam. And just put some Mod Podge on that as well and then you'll cover it. And then later when you come to put some moss on it, you don't have to worry about those little edges because they'll have some tissue paper covering it. Again, that's up to you. Okay, so I'm going to continue doing this and put all this hot pink until it's all completely covered. And I'll be back so we can start on another layer. Okay, so I've covered it up with the hot pink tissue paper. Again, you can use whatever you want to use to cover this in your own patterns. Uh, like I said, you can also use some decorative napkins. And I cut about four rows of this in case you're wondering. And they're about two inch by two inch little square so that's what covered that as you can see you don't need to use a lot of tissue paper you can even stop right here and just leave it as it is just make sure it's all completely covered with some Mod Podge and I am using a gloss finish by the way now while it's still wet you could also choose to sprinkle some light glitter on here to give it a little bit of a sparkle a little bit of bling if that is what you prefer or you could wait and keep doing some layers and then add, in, add some glitter if you like. Now I went ahead and I got the other three tissue papers that I have. It's very pale and then it's got this beautiful pattern and then a floral. And I've cut about two strips of this. They're about one inch or so in size. You can cut whatever size you want. You could do little triangles instead of little squares or rectangles. And that's what I have now. So now I'm going to decoupage them. In any random pattern, you don't have to follow what I'm doing. Like I said, this is such an easy little thing to do, such a, a simple craft to do, uh, and it leaves a very pretty finish. You can even do this on some candles. I have a video where I did some tissue paper on candles, which was one of my first craft videos that I did when I decided to start posting videos on my channel. Look at that. So just 
add them how you want or maybe you just want the floral one then just add that I'm going to continue on just randomly placing them here and there and maybe the next uh, layer that I decide to do maybe I'll cut them in little triangles I don't know we'll see and I'm going to let that hot pink show through between some of the pieces some of them might be uh, overlapping each other and some may have just a lot of the pink around them that's what I'm doing so far once it dries it's gonna look a lot prettier right now I just have this white milky finish because the Mod Podge is not completely dry well, once we let it dry it's gonna look really pretty and you'll be able to see the pattern a lot better so I'm just gonna continue doing that till I'm satisfied at the coverage that I have there we go I'm sort of kind of following the pattern that I've done where I did a floral, a light pink, and then I did a little patterned one. <clears throat> so that's kind of the pattern that I'm following, but I'm also going to try and go like at a diagonal like that. So it's not like an all just straight and obvious pattern. I am going to advise you <clears throat> when you put a first layer to let that dry completely and don't roll it around on the table like I've been doing because back here I scratched it up a little bit so I've got some of the tissue paper on my table right here because it's stuck so just be very careful with that um, I was holding it down like that so that maybe you could see but I don't think you can from the angle so it's always better to just keep it standing I don't have any at the bottom here no decoupage on the bottom we don't need that so just be very careful when you're rolling it around so it's best to just keep it standing like that and do your pattern and don't don't lay it down on a table like I did. All right, everyone, I have finished decoupaging my vase and here you can see it looks really pretty. I followed the little pattern that I said and then I had some little uh, squares left over. So then I went ahead and I went over it and I layered on top of the same look just a little bit off to the side just to give it more of that little floral look those little pieces that had the little flowers I could add some more I feel like I, I would like to put more of this floral tissue on it but I think it looks really pretty just like that so I'm going to stop now I've let it dry for about I've been away for about 30 minutes maybe a little bit more and um, it still feels like it could use some more drying so I would let it dry for a good hour or more depending on the you know the area that you're at the humidity and such uh, that's around you. Now you'll also notice that right here above the lip the styrofoam was sticking out of the uh, vase a little bit. <clears throat> the reason that it's sticking out a little bit is because right here it's a little bit wider than the inside of the vase and that's what's going to keep it from falling in. I don't know if I explained that very well but anyway so since we had styrofoam showing on there I could just take some green moss and cover that up you know hot glue it around there but since I was adding this um, decoupage pieces of uh, tissue paper and I got up to the very edge I, I was able to cover some of that uh, styrofoam all the way around so I went ahead and I continued doing that and then I just trimmed off any pieces of tissue where they're sticking up and I did the same thing on the bottom I put little pieces because I would stop with a square you know a little, little square and even if it was a little point of it uh, then the bottom seemed a little bit bare so I added little squares here coming up like that and then I just trimmed off uh, the excess so basically I was cutting these little little triangular or not, not little rectangular shapes or squares they weren't very square I was cutting them in half to make little little triangles to finish off the bottom uh, so that's what I <laughs> did there anyway <clears throat> now that I've covered that styrofoam I don't need to put any moss there and now all I can do is just put a little bit and I've got this green moss and you could hot glue it on I'm not going to hot glue it on because I don't want when I poke in a flower uh, for the um, the moss or glue from the moss to be in the way and then I won't be able to poke it in and as a matter of fact I'm actually going to wait until after I've got flowers on here so that I can see on the edges where I can just kind of tuck in you know the the green the moss in between the stems of the flowers and cover any styrofoam that might still be showing so I'm going to do that at the end I'm going to push that off the side 
Okay, so now I am going to prepare all of my flowers and remove all of these little tags off of them. And then what I need to do is I need to cut each individual stem off the, let me move this over a little bit, off this little bunch so that they're separate. So I'm going to cut them at the lowest point, just like that. And then if I need to cut them any shorter, I'm able to do so. It's always better to cut them at the longest point because you could always shorten them. All right, so I'm going to do that with my other two floral bunches. And this grass here uh, is also like that on little separate stems. So I'll cut some of those as well too, and I'll shall be back. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start building my arrangement. And I've got my hot glue gun because I am going to be gluing the stems on here. I'm gonna take one of these flowers and I'm gonna decide how tall I want my arrangement to be. I do not have a, a lot of greenery or a lot of flowers to fill this up, so I don't wanna make it too tall. And this could either be a centerpiece or it could be placed on a shelf or a little table. Uh, up against the wall. So I'm going to decide that this is how tall I want it. But look at how much stem I have to go in there. And remember our styrofoam is not very deep. So I'm going to cut this just barely enough to go into the styrofoam. So I'm marking it with my finger. And this is going to go right in the middle because I want a center piece. So this is my height, and I'm just going to push it in just barely, and that is why I'm using hot glue to make sure that it is attached and it's not going to go anywhere. And when you push it in, just push it in gently. You don't want to push it in too hard. You may accidentally push in your whole styrofoam, and it is going to be a bugger to be pulling it out and re-adding or re-gluing it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a flower here and a flower here, one over here and one over here, but I want them to be lower than my center flower. So I'm going to go about that way, but then I'm also going to bend it. And then again, I'm going to cut down here, mark it with my, with my nail or finger, trim that off. And while I'm at it, I can use this same flower, if I just straighten it up a little bit, I can use that same flower or the piece that I've cut off from the bottom and use that to do the other four. There we go. Now, before I insert them, I want to bend them out just a little bit. So just bend them out a little bit like that. And then just make sure that the, the, it does go outward and not inward. So put a little bit of glue on the tip here. Cut it at an angle. And I'm gonna do that on the opposite side and then one in the front and one in the back, the same exact way that I just did these two. And here's where I can adjust. Maybe push in a little bit more. I'm going to turn it around so I can do the other two. There we go. That looks nice. There we go. And now all I have to do is just fill in my little spaces. So I'm going to use these little grasses to fill in. And they have a nice line, kind of a long stem on them. So I'm just going to trim them. Very small stem on them. By the way, this is the night before New Year's Eve. So you might hear some uh, popping going off. And it's just neighbors popping off some fireworks already. There's a little grass right here. And I'm basically putting them <coughs> between these two flowers and this one. So between this little triangle of flowers is where I'm placing the grass. So I'm going to continue doing that. And then I'll add some more little flowers and the green moss to fill in my little arrangement. I do have more flowers of this, these same, same flowers that I have here because I thought maybe I could do two little arrangements and give them as little gifts for Valentine's. This could also just be for spring, Mother's Day. And 
and as you can see the grass gives it a little bit more height. What I like to do with these little grassy bits, because they are just basically just sticking straight up, is I take my scissors and open them up and then just kind of curl them. And I do the majority of them because I feel like, okay, it's a little too high. I don't want that much height. Can you tell that I've curled them right there? Okay, I'm gonna do the others and then we'll be back and add a few more little flowers in between and that'll complete our, our floral arrangement. Okay, so I'm back and I'm just going in between the other bundles and adding actually this one because it has the flower like really low down here I'm going to just cut it right there so I actually make two stems out of this so now I've got one and two and I can do the same with this one I think this will be an extra piece so I'll put it to the side I did have six flowers on the bundle so I like to use an uneven number. I have an odd number, so I don't want to use this one. I can save it for another project. Like I said, I have more, more of these little bushes. I bought several. I thought they were really pretty, and I could use them for several uh, arrangements. So I can use those extras with the others if I need to. I'm going to put these closer to the edge, kind of bend them downward. Some more glue in here. As you can see, this is getting fuller already. This is what it looks like from the top. Okay, now I have these, and these are very nice and full, lots of greenery on them. So I'm just pushing this. It has this little greenery bit. I'm just pushing it as, as up as high as I can, cutting it at short, because I'm gonna use these to fill in all of this and make it feel nice and full. So wherever I put one, which is right here, I'm gonna do the opposite, and I'll do the same over here and over here. And because this one I have a little bit extra, I can put some in the middle as well. Here, and the opposite is over here. these two nice and short. Sorry about my cutters. I used to do a lot of productivity floral design and I'm used to grabbing them and then just throwing them. And I know it's very noisy and it bothers some people. Sorry but that's just the way it happens. That's why that happens. It's a hard habit to knock out. Okay I'm gonna do these a little bit longer. So they'll stick out the top. If you ever walk into a floral design room, it's going to be very quiet and all you're going to hear is a little quiet and <laughs> that's what it sounded like when we were doing lots of productivity, to, especially during the holidays when we had to make lots of arrangements. Okay, so now on these two I'm going to push the green down a little bit. Look how nice and full that looks, but it's not crowded. But I can see the styrofoam, so now this is where I'm going to go and take my moss and work backwards and actually just tuck in pieces of moss. But I'm going to put, I'm going to open the, the space up a little bit, put all the dots of glue in there. You could use greenery pens, but not everybody's got greenery pens uh, to hold these down. So this is what you can do instead. And I've got more of this if I need to pull some more out. So I'm just going to go in between my flowers, little stems, and push some of the, the moss in there and cover all the styrofoam. Don't burn your fingers. Okay. See what that's looking like in there? That's covering up the styrofoam. 
or on this side you can see the styrofoam. So I'm going to continue doing that and I'll be back. All right, everyone, I have completed my little floral arrangement. There we go, and I've added the moss in there so that you can't see the styrofoam. All right, and I've also moved around the flowers a little bit because while I was tucking in the moss, some of them got pushed out of the way, so I just went around and made sure that they were all nice and spaced out and they were in a nice little position, so I didn't see like a major bare spot anywhere. I also went ahead and I dug through my stuff and I found this little heart and a little stick and this pretty ribbon that has some pink in it. And I thought it would be nice to add a little bow because you could use this as a spring uh, centerpiece. You could uh, use it for Mother's Day. Uh, I created it for Valentine's Day, but as you can see, it could be used for other occasions. Um, and of course, you can do it in any color that you want. You can use some red roses if you wish. Now, I decided that I'm going to add a little bit extra that I didn't show you at the very beginning so that you can give it as a little gift. You can just take a little pick like this, a little bit of ribbon, and I'm just going to cut maybe about 36 inches. Or this is more like 24, okay? So I'm going to tie this around this pick and just make a bow, just a regular bow. So we don't have to do too much work and pull out wire and such to tie up a multi-loop bow, but you can certainly do that. I'm just going to get this bow on here to the loops of the size that I want and it's nice and tight. And now I can trim the edges and I'll do the same way, the same, the other, the same way that I did the other one. Okay, so now I have a cute little bow on a little heart with a little heart there. And then we can just put that right in there and this becomes a little gift for someone. And obviously the little heart could be Valentine's Day, but it could also be for Mother's Day. So just keep that in mind that you can decorate this in any way you want and use the same idea. I just wanted to show you how easy it was to decorate a plain glass vase or if you had a plastic one or maybe it's even a little cardboard box that you want to turn into a little vase so whatever you might have it's so easy to just decoupage it and add the colors that you want and I showed you how to put together this little centerpiece so it's super easy if you're having a party and you want to make several arrangements uh, for a multiple um, amount of tables then this is a nice simple centerpiece where you're not going to spend too much money again this is all from the Dollar Tree I used three bunches of flowers and I used one vase and so that's four dollars and uh, of course the tissue paper I also spent a dollar on uh, but it's going to go a long way I had some leftover for another vase um, so it's not going to be something like really expensive to make and uh, you can get your friends together and create them if you have to do some kind of a church event or just want to get your ladies group together for a Mother's Day lunch. And again, you could do this, like I said, in a different way. So I would probably choose maybe something a little bit shorter if you want to put these around a or on the center of a luncheon table because that way it's not too tall and as everybody's sitting around, they can look over it and have a nice conversation. So you might want to choose something shorter. All right, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed my little tutorial on how to put together a decoupaged vase to make a simple floral arrangement for Valentine's, Spring, or even Mother's Day. So I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up, and I hope that you too will give me a big old thumbs up and leave a nice comment down below and let me know what you think. Are you going to be making these for what occasion? Let me know. And also make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so. And thank you to everyone who has been subscribing. I appreciate that very much. Thank you very much. If you want to leave any suggestions of thing, things that you'd like me to do in my videos, go ahead and do so in the comments below. I do put up videos every Tuesday and every Friday. It wasn't a while I put up a weekend vlog. So make sure you hit that little notification bell as well so that you can be notified of when I upload a video. Make sure you share on your social medias, and as always, enjoy, and Happy New Year, everyone.